Hey, we're back. It is video number three. We are going to create our plugin parameters and connect them to variables within our plugin core object. This is all actually really easy to do with the uh, control code creator, which is part of the aspect creator software. Now in the last video, we already set up our volume plugin I uh, project here and we created the Xcode project for it. Today, we are, in this video, we're going to go ahead and connect that up to parameters. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you open up the documentation and go to write a plugin, we can look at the plugin specifications for the plugin we're going to write right now. And it is a volume plugin. It isn't really super special, but it does have one of each of all the types of controls we want to be able to use in all the rest of the plugins that we make. So this plugin is going to have left and right channels. We're going to have a single volume control in DB that's going to change the volume, an on-off mute switch, a stereo left-right channel swapper switch, and a VU meter that's going to show us the combined left and right VU signal uh, back out. So here's what the plugin looks like in a block diagram form. Now there are several things to understand about the block diagram here, the GUI here, and how it all connects into the plugin object. This is all inside of my new book, which is uh, Designing Audio Effect Plugins in, sec in C++, the second edition. So this is kind of a rehash of what's already in there, and I'm going to go through it pretty quickly because it's also in very high detail in the SDK documentation. So here's where our plugin looks like, and here are the controls on it. You need to understand three concepts. The first concept is each GUI control here is going to be indexed with an integer value which uniquely defines it on the GUI interface here. The volume control here is going to be control number zero, the mute is going to be one, channels two, and VU meter three. So I'm going to zero index them, zero, one, two, three. There is no rule about that. You can make them positive or negative numbers, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to follow this zero indexing for its, its ease. So step number one is we need to index these so that we can, can relate these GUI control items to parameters in the plugin that are changed. The second thing that we need to do is we need to create a parameter object that represents each one of these little clusters here. We're going to have one parameter object that is the entire volume control right here. It doesn't matter that we have a knob and an edit control. This is all one conceptual control. So there's going to be one parameter for it, one parameter for mute, one parameter for the channels, and one parameter for the VU. Now let's talk about how data moves from the GUI control volume into the block diagram or into the guts of the plugin. And this is a, a, a figure taken from my book. And I want to focus on this center row right here. In it we see our gain knob, which is in DB and has an index of zero. Uh, we're going to call this index the control ID, but you can think of it as the index. In this example, our gain control goes from minus 60 dB up to zero. And the gain control is going to write its information into a parameter object. I have this parameter object under the DAW column right here, and as I explain in the book, the actual physical location of this parameter object is within a base class of the plugin itself. However, I want you to really think about this, these parameter objects as being very separate and indistinct and outside of the plugin itself. This is because there is a thread safe mechanism that we're going to use to get information from the GUI into the plugin. This is all handled in the plugin shell code. You don't need to worry about it at all. You do need to understand that for the GUI controls that are going to map to plugin parameters that are going to send some range of information, ultimately we're going to want that information to wind up inside of a plugin um, variable. In this case, the plugin is very the plugin variable is named gain. And we're going to want a mechanism for getting that information from the, the plugin parameter safely into this plugin variable named gain. When we do this and we take a parameter from the GUI and map it into an internal variable within the plugin object itself, 
we call this a variable binding. So we are going to automatically bind this GUI control to this variable. And in Aspic, I do this in a thread safe manner. So if you choose to use variable binding, which we are, you don't have to worry your parameters are always gonna get transferred into these variables in a thread safe manner. If you do not wanna use variable binding and you wanna do this on your own, you're totally free to do that. You will need to pick up this information at the top of the buffer process cycle and then uh, load it into whatever local variables or structures or whatever you want to do that. For all of our plugins and all the book projects, we're always going to use the automatic variable binding because it's automatic and it's easy. The, uh, the variable here, gain in DB, is going to need to be converted into a new variable, which I'm calling volume right here. And the volume variable is the variable we're going to use in our C++ code to scale the audio input and convert it into an audio output. So we've got three different things to deal with here. Number one, we have the index or control ID for the parameter. We have the parameter object itself, and we have the bound variable that we're gonna connect the parameter object to. So in order to do that, I've set up uh, a GUI control table set in the documentation. And that GUI control table set is right here. These are the three GUI controls which send information to the plugin. The volume control in DB, the mute control on off, and the, the channel select stereo left right. The linked variable name is here, volume DB, enable mute and channels, and the data type is here, double int and int. We're gonna have double, uh, double data types for continuous variables, and we're gonna use int data types for discrete variables like the on off and stereo left right switches that we have right here. The VU variable is an output variable that's gonna go back out to the GUI. The VU uh, variables are always bound to floating point data types. The reason for that mainly is that the one thing that all APIs agree on is that we can represent the audio data in floating point type, and in general, these VU um, values are gonna be taken directly from audio data. So that's why it's mapped to a, a floating point value. So here is the plugin of um, GUI and block diagram again, and all of these controls here wind up being pieces of the block diagram and of the GUI control that we've got going on there. Now I've redrawn this same idea one more time right here. So let's take a look at this. Control ID zero is our volume control. That's the parameter, which is right here in the parameter column. The type of parameter is a continuous parameter that's gonna output continuous values between minus 60 and plus 12. And we're gonna bind it to a double data type named volume underscore DB. The mute switch has control ID number one. It is a discrete on off switch, and we are going to bind it to a variable but called enable mute. The channels is stereo left right. The control ID is two. It is another discrete uh, parameter that has three possible values. We're going to map that to the integer value channels, and the floating point uh, VU meter variable is going to get sent back out as a continuous control back out to the VU meter, which has a control ID of three. Now, as far as these two discrete values work, for the mute value, off is going to be the number zero and on is going to be the number one. And that number zero or one is going to get applied to this integer variable right here. For the discrete variable, stereo will be zero, left will be one and right will be two, zero, one, two. That will get mapped to this integer value right here. Now you're maybe asking why am I using an integer value and not an unsigned integer value because these discrete values are zero index or zero based. The reason for doing that has to do with in the code later on when we want to compare the value that we have in the enable mute variable with the state of this GUI control being on or off. When the number of states gets large, like stereo left, right, or maybe six or eight or 10 or dozens of different states, 
we don't want to have to call this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and give it some cryptic, um, some cryptic value. So we're going to wind up using a strongly typed enumeration to create the string values that we see here that we present for the user. And the underlying data type of a strongly typed enum is actually an int, not an unsigned int. And that is why we're specifying these as integer values. All right, so this is our plan, and these are the four variables that we're going to wind up needing to create. And now we need to get those created and put inside of our code. So to do that, we're going to go back to the Aspect Creative Creator software, and we're going to use it. And we're going to use the control table specifically that I've got right here in order to create those controls. Now, we're going to put those controls inside of these two uh, files, plugincore.h and plugincore.cpp. At the top of plugincore.h, you can see that I've got this little uh, set of hex uh, commands. They don't mean really anything. They don't. There's nothing encoded in them or anything like that. Uh, these is a little little area where we're going to put our control ID enumeration. Down in the class definition for the plugin core object here. In the private area in here, in between these hex codes, which don't mean anything, they don't encode anything, is where we're going to put our bound variables. Volume underscore db, enable mute, and our channels, and our view meter variable. Over in the plugin core, there is a function called init plugin parameters, and this is where we're going to place our parameter C++ object initialization code. We're going to be using the Aspect Creator tool to write all that code for us. So all we're really going to need to do is just paste code into the, uh, the, the code here. So there is no code to actually type in at this point, which is uh, pretty cool. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and get started on that process, and we're going to get that parameter code and that bound variable code plugged into here, and we're going to compile it, and we're going to get it wired into the audio signal processing.